whispers in our ear. Be still, my love. Know that I am God. Be still, my love. No. Find though kingdoms fall, through thoughtful hearts will harm. Your mercy holds us, we hear your call. We linger in your resting arms as you. Change these hearts of stone. God breaks our arrows, God breaks our bows. God calls us chosen, calls us God's own. Be still, my love. No. Good morning. Just noticed that I've had an hour between the last Mass and this Mass and forgot to set up for this Mass. Any of you forget things? <laughs> Good. All right, a couple of announcements before we begin this morning. 
we in St. Charles County have been given the, the uh, permission to have 50% capacity in our churches, uh, but, it, but we still are supposed to practice masks and six feet distance. So one of the ways we're going to start increasing capacity is by putting somebody in those pews that are now empty, but in the middle of the pew. And that way there will still be six feet distance, but we'll be able to put more people in the church if they're willing to come. So we'll just uh, see how that works. Any of you who might be sitting in that middle seat, when you come to communion, you'll come toward the center aisle as opposed to the outside aisle. And we'll just keep trying to do six feet distance from each other. If we continue to do all this stuff, we're going to continue to progress. If we let go of it, then it's all going to go back to the way it was. So we just need to be patient with each other and think about the other person as well as ourselves. So just a reminder, wear your mask all the way through Mass. Uh, even when you come forward to receive communion, keep the mask on. Receive the communion in the hand if that's what you wish to do, and then step aside and move your mask. If you wish to receive communion in the, on the tongue, then wait till the end of the line, and then I'll step behind this barrier so I'm not directly breathing your breath and uh, I'll serve you communion in that way. Uh, next Sunday is our official goodbye to Father Peter. Uh, he's not leaving until the 28th of, Ju of July, but uh, next Sunday he'll um, be outside under the pavilion after all the Sunday Masses. So if you want to say goodbye to him, and it's going to be a, a quarantine COVID goodbye, so they'll be uh, individually wrapped uh, snacks with a bottle of water. So there's no punch bowls, no things to pick things out of, but we'll be able to share some good times with him and uh, wish him well as he leaves. A reminder that all of the songs are in the uh, bulletin that you should have right there at your seat. Uh, if you wish to sing, please do so. If not, Listen to some beautiful music and voices. So let's stand and begin our worship. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God's grace and peace be with each of you. Thank you. Let's take a moment to call to mind our sins, choices we have made to hurt ourselves or others, asking God for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, for the times when we have asked you to forgive us, but failed to forgive another, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ Jesus for the times in which we use more than we need while others still need to live. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, for the times in which we have substituted our will for your will, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of all of our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us for you alone are the holy one you alone are the God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill us, your faithful people, with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you, a just savior he is, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord.
bless your name forever and ever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is kind and Slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. All your work shall thank you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful. supports all who fall and raises up those who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. We have a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden 
these things from the wise and the learned. You have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm a city kid. I grew up in the middle of the city of St. Louis, and so all of these agricultural images from scripture really made no sense to me. In fact, uh, for those of you old enough, we used to have rogation days, you remember that? We used to pray uh, once a year for the, the health of the harvest and for the farmers and agriculturalists, and we used to march around this asphalt playground and sprinkle it with holy water and pray for the crops. And I thought, it's not going to work, I don't think. So for me, agricultural images didn't really hit the point. But luckily, for the image that's used in the gospel today, luckily I had a grandpa who was a teamster. And it was teamsters before it was a truck driver. It was a teamster when they actually drove a team of horses. And during the WPA, during the Depression, he would uh, drive a team of horses and drag these big white rocks behind him and built the walls on the River de Pere in South St. Louis. So that's how all those white rocks got there. So anyway, he, he would tell me what it means to put a harness or a, or a bridle or, using the words of the gospel, a yoke on a set of horses and how sometimes... They would work really well together, and then sometimes he'd have to yank the rein to get them back in the direction that they were supposed to go. But for the horses, that was the only choice they had. They could rebel a little bit, but then they were stuck. For us, it's different. When we're asked to take on the yoke of Jesus, we're given it, we're yoked to Jesus in baptism. For any of us who have been baptized, We are joined to him for life. But we have the freedom, we have the free will, if we choose, to take that yoke off and throw it aside. He will never leave us, but we have the choice to leave him. And I think if we're honest in this church this morning, we've all done that. We've all known what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to be yoked to him. And we've decided, not today, not in this situation, not in this time. What's incredibly lovely about the love of Jesus is that he gives us 70 times 7 chances to put that yoke back on and to be teamed with him in the work that he has given us to do. So I just ask each of us to examine this morning the choices we're making, uh, the choices to be yoked to him. Now there's a couple of words that we really don't like these days. One is obedience and the other is submission. What do you hear a lot of people saying right now? Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I have my own personal right. As if somehow saying, my choices, what I do, don't affect the world. I I was hoping that we would learn through this virus that my very breath 
and the breath of somebody in China or Russia or Venezuela or Brazil, that each of those breaths could kill another person. But somehow we haven't learned that lesson that this virus has the power to teach us, that somehow we are all connected with one another. So let's just examine this morning those places where we're either choosing to be yoked to Jesus or we're choosing not to be yoked to him. So if you can imagine, I, I, I like to use my imagine when I'm praying over the scriptures, but if you could imagine that Jesus is here and we're here and we're, we got this big harness, this big yoke on us, and I don't know about you, but sometimes I look at Jesus and I go, Really? That's what you said to do? That's how we're supposed to act right now? And there's times when I want to say, as the Old Testament reading said today, we worship a Savior who's not somebody who came on a chariot, not came on a mighty horse, didn't uh, carry weapons of power as we know them. No, he came on the back of an ass. And he came not in power over people, but in power to wash people's feet. Humble and meek. Sometimes I look at him and I say, really? You want me to be meek and humble in this situation? Really, you want me to wash this person's feet after what they've done to me? Off goes the yoke. Um, I know better than you do, Jesus, In this situation, it might have worked in the past, but in this situation, people need to be hurt. Then they'll learn. Let's get on the horse. Let's pick up the bow. Let's show people how much we can hurt them. And then we learn, what? That it doesn't work. We learn that there's no life or joy in that. We learn that it causes separation and distance and hatred and prejudice. We learn all those things. And we get tired. And we hear his invitation again that says, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I'll work with you. And so we humbly and meekly take the yoke and put it back on. Okay, Jesus, okay, Jesus, I'm willing to work with you. And we do that for a while, and then he asks us to do something inconvenient or uncomfortable. He asks us to act in a way that really looks foolish in the eyes of the world. He asks us to extend love to those who hate us. He asks us to forgive 70 times 7 He asks us to give to those who would not give us anything. And we're willing to go along for a while, and then off comes the yoke again, because life has become too difficult to be a fool for Christ. So we're given this opportunity this morning in Eucharist, When we come forward to share in communion, I hope you're hearing the words of Scripture that remind us, if we do this in church and then don't act that way out there, we're a hypocrite. We're blaspheming against the body of Christ. If we say amen here and don't take on his yoke out there. So let's hear his invitation this morning. From whatever place we are in life, come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Your soul will find rest in me.
Let's stand and profess our faith as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Loving God, we give you praise and thanks for your word. It gives us comfort and challenges us. And so, following your word, we now come to you with these, our prayers. For the church, that God will help us take up the yoke of Christ and follow him in speaking the truth lovingly, offering forgiveness to those who wrong us, and praying for our enemies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that God will guide us in living the values which we proclaim so that all may experience life, liberty, and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who need healing, particularly those with COVID-19, that God's healing spirit will ease their suffering, restore them to health, and guide all who are caring for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who do not believe in God, that the Spirit will lead them into an encounter with the living God and help them to be open to the one who loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be childlike, that we may learn dependence upon God and surrender our attempts to control our lives through knowledge power, or possessions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Anna Jo Fisher, wife of William, and those defending our country, may our prayers accompany them to heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have a, a few petitions coming in on the, from our friends who are jib, dry, joining us live stream. Uh, one person is praying for the kids at St. Jude's Hospital. Another praying for a friend who is in pain right now. Uh, for all those uh, prayers that are here in the box on the altar and for all those prayers that come from our hearts and the hearts of all those connected with us online. For these prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer you these needs spoken aloud and all those prayers that pour out to you. We pray them all through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice might be found acceptable to God, who is almighty. May this offering dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of, our, of your death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity and love. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our administrator, all the clergy and all who serve you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and saints who pleased you throughout the ages, may we come to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, O Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe in the midst of all distress, as we await our blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, through Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with each of you. Thank you. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We'll pray with those who are not able to be with us this morning, but are connected with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already in my heart, and unite myself to you completely. Do not let me ever be separated from you. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, that we may come to the gift of salvation and never cease to praise you. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Don't forget when we exit today that those of you who are along that wall will start us off, and then those of you who are here will go, then here, and then over there. Hate to be repetitive, but I think sometimes people are coming for the first time and it's just helpful to know. I wanted to share with you, since so much of the scripture this morning is about the little ones and being childlike, I had a baptism yesterday. We've been having lots of those that were postponed. And uh, the little girl that was baptized has a, I would say, a precocious brother who's four. And so he had a running narrative during the whole baptism, asking questions, asking if he could help, all those sort of things, the the kind of stuff a child does in such a blessed way. But at the very beginning, when he entered the church, uh, he came with his mom and dad and the little baby and lots of other people, and he says to his mom, where's Jesus? And she, of course, turns toward me. (laughs) So I said, well, you know, Jesus is in the tabernacle. And he's with us in the whole world. But, you know, he's also in your own heart. And he looked up and he looked at his mom and he said, Mom, Jesus is living in my heart. So don't ever fail to understand the power of the gift of faith that we've been given and share it with people. Even people you think you know have heard it a thousand times. Especially at times like this, we need to know that he's with us. He's in us. What did the scripture say today? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. I don't know what there is to be afraid of if that's true. So if we go forth, the Lord be with you. Thank you. May God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go now, give witness with your life.